Welcome back to the number one after show for the number one D&D podcast, Conversations and Catapults. I'm your host, Nathan, and today I'm joined by a number of honored guests. Say hello, honored guests. Hello, I am honored guest the first. My name is Ben, and I play the level nine gnome wizard, Windsor Wallaby, on Trials and Trebuchets, a hit podcast you may have heard of. Honor is all mine, and I'm Carla, and I play the level nine tiefling roguelock Integrity Addleberry from the hit TV show, <laughs> Trials and Trebuchet. Where's the Imagine. sitcom tune? Hi, I'm Sarah, and I'm looking upon the broken world below right now. Uh, let's see, I spy uh, 10 dead bodies, six parts of a cursed eldritch horror. Um, I'm gonna keep looking, I don't see Waldo yet. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sam. And I play the Honorable Serenef Sinderman, the level nine human sorceress. Uh, I'm Luke. I'm the dungeon master. What are I'm you fucking... doing here? <laughs> Why are I'm you here? It's a sweaty, sweaty moon. You all may have uh, noticed we haven't re- we haven't pushed out one of these in a little while. Uh, that was <laughs> what? crazy. That's why I'm so much. <laughs> all we right. each contractions for a month. <laughs> Each conversation in Catapult is like me giving birth to a new episode, and, and then I'm passing the baby around to all of our listeners saying, hello, look upon this wrinkled, shriveled Don't mess. Don't give it a little kiss, though. What yes, do not kiss the baby. And because of the uh, downright dearth of episodes that we have yet to cover, uh, we decided to have a big group recording similar to how we usually do a uh, end of arc wrap up. But just a little bit more conversational, more talking about how mm-hmm. the arc has flowed so far. And I wanted to make sure to have Luke here with us on that. If you yeah. have a complaint, feel free to leave it in a five-star review on our uh, Apple podcast uh, <laughs> reviews. Uh, those really yeah. help. And we will only listen to what is said in a five-star review. We only we only <laughs> accept five-star reviews. <laughs> yep. And to be clear, we're covering up to episode 182. Is that right, Nathan? That is correct. Uh, okay, perfect. It is basically... I believe it's what one seventy three to one to one eighty. Oh my goodness two? gracious! That's nine episodes. Sounds about Dang. right. It would be kind of ridiculous for me to talk about uh, specific instances with the players when it has been uh, multiple weeks since they ever remembered doing them, and even longer since they what actually did them. Minute. So <laughs> yes, I wanted to talk to you all. We just found out that you all are on the moon, mm. which is big, L- Luke. Were we always yeah. heading to the interstellar like aspect of the, the world? Okay, well, let me tell you. The premise of this arc popped into my head when my brain said Lunarctic, and then oh I cackled like a god, goose. Oh really? god. And so Jesus I wanted to do an arc Christ. in the Arctic that dealt with the moon. And I think going to the moon and seeing the planar system as it is splayed out before them is a really good uh, thing. And it also can tie this kind of oblique arc into a more main plot Hmm. focused arc. It's interesting that this popped into your mind because of a pun. Because one thing that we've just recently learned is this revelation that Seishul and Meafide are the same being. So this moon goddess is also this snake Mm -hmm. goddess. Was that also a function of Lunarctic or was this always uh, the intent? Yeah, so this is a general thing with the entire pantheon of gods is that they cover a lot of each other's own uh, like bases, and so there's a lot of interpretation in the way that people in the world want to uh, worship different deities, like the six major ones that you are familiar with, the, one, the ones with like the divine planes that we've seen. And the intent with Meafide and generally ancient deities as a large was always to be a, have it like we have only seen two different people or rather names for the same person or Meafide rather. I'll, I'll just I'm going to call her Meafide for this ease of things, because in personal conversations, it gets kind of wonky if you switch between the names. But like the answer after that long-winded explanation is I like when different cultures see the same things and call it something different. Um, And so the giants calling her Seisul and uh, Shiora at large calling her Meafide, uh, tying into their own kind of like cultural way of naming things and perceiving things is something that I really like. And yes, I've always intended to show other ancient deities and have a lot of signs pointing to the fact that this is just the same thing but in a different place. So are those six major gods, are they also ancient and have like gone through multiple names or are they actually like new blood, so to speak? That's a great question, Nathan. 
I guess that will be resolved in plot. Fine. (laughs) That is something that I have uh, intention to discuss. Should our students be successful in cleansing the corruption? Yes. Hmm. Interesting. I like that. Carla has a, I think Carla has a theory on this that she's been telling me about for the past week, though. Ooh, Carla, what's that theory? Well, well, my thought is that um, Meafide in this ancient world of Ib was like the main god. And then all of a sudden something caused um, the old Ib to create the new Ib. And in the new Ib, Meafide is different, I guess, like... Aspects. Presentation. Different aspects of Meafide mm. was separated into six. Ooh. So basically, like, Meafide is the combination of all of those. They were just separated with the new world. Perhaps, I don't know what the reason for that would be, but... I mean, it could um, be a, a like a byproduct of a new world being created. You know, like, uh, if Meafide is this... Uh, beam of white light being shot through a prism to create six other gods out of her aspects. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Mm -hmm. the prism in this case would be the breaking apart of the two worlds. Um, I think that's a really good analogy for this theory. I quite like that. Uh, I quite like your theory. I think that's uh, really neat. Never even occurred to me. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, Do we have, like, we have had major plot revelations here and I know y'all are very keyed into this kind of like mega plot. Mm-hmm. Does anyone have any other theories about like what may be going on here or is it just like waiting for more information at this point? Well, I don't know the extent to which this is supposed to be this is implied versus the extent to which is this is supposed to be, oh yeah, that's fucking obvious, but like reasonably sure that in that most recent scene where they were like, yeah, this woman came and she came into here, like that that is supposed to be Terassus would be my assumption, which is Ooh, no, Luke looks like he's about to say something. Just there's a thing that Carla said to me the other day, which was, what if it's Nesca, though, she said as a revelation, to which I think is hilarious, the idea of Mira (laughs) being compared, like, whole cloth to Nesca. It's just so funny to me. Listen, (laughs) I am a resident Nesca stan. I believe Nesca did nothing wrong. That's fucking chef's kiss to me. Um, But that, that is also very great. But I've had this kind of, I mean... Yes, I had this sort of pet theory idea mm. turning in my brain for a long time, which is that the these planar shifts that happened where we're shifting to a different plane, where, I mean, obviously with the uh, little tour of the planes, it seems that Shiora may have been on a different plane entirely, that that is literally like the plane of Meafede, which I think is very interesting. Uh, I think that it's quite likely that this... The planar shift is something that happened either during or immediately after uh, the progenitor basically killing everyone as some mm-hmm. way to either seal them away or protect some new world from, like, basically some way to keep the progenitor contained and that this was done likely by Terassus and that druidic magic and these other things ties into that. And so I'm, I think that whether this is true or not, we're going to see something potentially relevant to that soon, which I find very inter- interesting and exciting. I'm so excited uh, yeah the, the number of like revelations like mm. dropping on us and especially in the most recent episodes of this arc has almost made it feel like you're gearing up for a finale of some sort luke oh like interesting and this may just be like my misread of it or like mm-hmm. naturally we're not anywhere near graduation or anything like that so obviously like i know in my head that's probably it's not a finale type of thing but it does feel like we are getting like a like all of this information that we never had before as like, all right, now we have all of this together. We're building up to something big at least. Yes. Yeah. Moving okay. into a third act of sorts, maybe. Who knows? That's mm. I have a I have a roadmap of where we're going now, very loosely. Like I have the the sketch of things in my head and written down as well, uh, for my own sanity. Um, obviously, if cool ideas pop into my head, I'm, I can't control myself. I think that's evident in the entire podcast. And so I will just turn them into their own 1900 episode arc that will delay the end (laughs) even further. But I do know where we're going and I am putting my pieces on the map so that we can get to that end point in a compelling way. I'm excited for it. Also, I just feel like it's worth, like, it's time to start explaining some shit, you know? Like, yeah. a mystery's fun, mm-hmm. but you gotta give people answers so that we can get to cooler places, you know? Mm. It's yeah. true. Yeah. And I like that it, it's not just information bombing us without any reason, you know? Because, like, you could sprinkle us with, oh, you read it in a textbook kind of thing. But this one, it has a compelling backstory. We're in the moon. We're 
like we are speaking with someone who has seen things like from the very beginning practically Mm -hmm. um, and can provide information, but not necessarily will provide information because they won't they they want to withhold some of that. Mm. So I really like that. It's not just like you're not spoon feeding us. There is a it makes sense why we would get this information. Mm -hmm. I agree. I like that. I also think, or at least I hope that in what may be the final episode or what may be the final two episodes of the arc, mm-hmm. that some of that is discovered by us through being in this place. Because I think that that kind of discovery through action is more interesting than just being told something by an NPC. And so I'm hoping that we will get to see some very fun shit in uh, our forays into corruption stopping. Corruption. I'm so worried for integrity, by the way. I feel like I just need to say that because her being the only person who has not received any kind of blessing and thus is not shielded from any damage of any type is fucking terrifying. Mm -hmm. How have you, Carla, have you been like preparing a backup (laughs) character but being ready for integrity's demise? How have you been doing Sarah, Sarah, don't ask me this conversation. She's been like inconsolable all week. The day that we finished recording, she was essentially acting until 1 a.m. Like integrity was already oh dead. God. Oh my god! I'm safe. I was. I would. I too. was like rereading all the rules, making sure that I don't fuck anything up. I was like, I, I, Luke. I think I should make a new character. I'm like, Luke. If I die, like, I, I like, like, honestly, like, if I. It's sort of if someone finds out that they're going to die in a couple of days and they're sort of putting all their shit in order for the people around them. You're and writing out Integrity's themselves. will, like trying to make sure <laughs> yeah. that like, your magic items <laughs> are divvied Ida. out properly. Yeah. So everything goes like, Ida. <laughs> it's like the Aristocats. <laughs> was there at one point, like, I forget if it was you directly said this or if it was like a, a big conversation but it was like oh no yeah if like when you guys die, there's going to be like a storyline it's not like you just die and then you're gone it's like there's going to be a story with yeah it. death isn't the end yeah when there's corruption around that willingly mm. wants to be taken back to presumably the material plane your home oh, world oh yay death is not, not the death, end but possession you know like venom uh, you know, stuff. there's a very fun uh, dark gift about having a parasite from another plane that is attached to your body that uh, has some really cool mechanical shit, and I just wanted to put that out there into the world. Mm. <laughs> Fascinating. Oh, interesting. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Integrity <laughs> another layering. set of mechanics. Give to more dark gifts for Integrity. Yeah, give more to Integrity ignore. all the dark <laughs> yeah. gifts. She has her crows. Yeah, ac- ah. Accumulate them. Just give her, like, another little crow growing out of her now. As oh, her yeah. Crow, yeah, them yeah. Help her. That fucking rules, actually. Yeah. But you really think the progenitor is going to let you die? Don't be silly. Yeah. Uh, for plans for I you. have not done shit. <laughs> For the progenitor. Yeah, you would be a wasted investment at this point. He's got to get a return, or they've got to get a return somehow. Is Wait, pronouns for the progenitor. It's been a while since I had to refer to them. He, they. All right, they. sick. Aw, yeah. that's nice for Creature. the progenitor. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Holy shit. What's up, Luke? Are you okay? The floor is just sopping wet. Oh, oh like, Christ. Is this don't need a like of water. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Get a towel. I have no time for such things. You do. You do have time for such things. No. But the show must go on. Speaking of time, actually, now we have to keep all of that in. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, speaking of time, I do want to hone in on a fun little mm-hmm. blank space that was left. Um, which is blank space, baby. Your characters <laughs> plus great. Uh, yes, we're stuck in a labyrinth for like fourteen days straight. Mm. Two good, whole good, weeks. Good stuff. Had a birthday in that labyrinth. Yep. For mm-hmm. two of the characters, oh, Nathan. I was like very. I asked Carla. I was like, "Does Integrity have her birthday gifts on her?" And I think I very discreetly, or just full ass, asked Sarah one day before recording, like, "Oh, does Mira carry her birthday gifts around her with her?" And both of them were like, "No." And I was in the back of my head, like, "Damn, <laughs> that fucking sucks for both of you." <laughs> you know what? Right. We'll get to open them late, and that will decrease the amount of time between this and next year that we one has to go. wait before opening one's birthday gift. So really, it's that fine. I can't wait sure. for it's next fine. year's moss cake. I hope it's bigger and more mossier than the last one. Ugh. I hope we're trapped in a labyrinth for three weeks next year. Why three? Jump into four. <laughs> All of this to say, uh, I would like to hear from you, the players, uh, what is something that your character got up to in those 14 days? Um, mm-hmm. like, or a fun moment that they had, uh, whether that was like breaking down and crying or 
<laughs> Not gonna lie, when I originally conceived of this question, I was like, this is just what I assume all four answers would be. Like, they all found a corner to cry in. But no, I wanted to open that up. And Luke, feel free to give an answer for great as well. I want to know uh, all the interiority that he has. <laughs> I feel like there was a sliding scale of mystery and then kind of fear, and then it went to hope, like, oh, maybe we're just around the corner. And then it just reached a point where Sarah Neth was just like, I don't know, just like sitting back against the wall, like as relaxed as you can be on a stone floor and stone walls and everything. And just like staring off in the middle distance, just kind of accepting the fact of, you know, like we maybe we'll never get out of here. This is our new home now. I feel like, and Carla, feel free to stop me if this doesn't feel right to you. Uh, I feel like Mira would be thinking about those uh, those texts that uh, she sent to Kurt where they were like, Shiora, what? That's just in a game we made up. <laughs> and then she was like talking it over with Integrity one day and she was like, can you imagine like if you just made something up like that? And so it ended up with like a couple hours on like a rest evening of them just like sitting together, like role playing Diane Danger oh shit together. Oh my oh God. Like, oh my God. You, you, know, you, you flipped yeah. Some moss instead of rolling a d20, heads or tails, success or fail, like. So were you, and one then, of you playing Alyssa Adventure, one of you playing Diane Danger? Or, or one person was like, quote unquote, DMing and they would have to swap spots <laughs> oh in like little mini adventures of like, okay, you're oh Diane and you're in the caverns of despair death. What despair do you see death. in like, <laughs> shit like that. And, and, and I, I would love if we created like miniatures. Out of moss. Like we found Out of moss. You just like, roll it like, up into a little like ball. moss is the hair and then we found like a pebble that is the head. Oh my god. I'm Check out to see if the pebble is a person first. Yeah. <laughs> Visualize. Nathan especially pebble. has a vested interest in being concerned about that, That's yes. True. Yeah, what if Canon and Nathan showed up on the moon in a pebble form? <laughs> That would be a fantastic tie-in, Nathan. Great Shit. point. <laughs> Thank you. Do make it happen, Luke. Uh, I feel like that is definitely a thing that Integrity would have done with um, Mira. Mm. But based on Integrity's like track record, she can't like be in the same place for too long without going crazy. Oh. Um, <laughs> so that's how so... you explain those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Integrity gets bored, all right? Happens to everyone, yeah. she just expresses it in a different way. So, like, I feel like, yes, integrity would would have, um, you know, helped them track, like, find their way towards, like, forward. But then, like, when they're at rest and she can't do anything, she's just going to run back, like, where they came from and then run back towards, like, just, like, keep on running. Like, maybe carving out the walls, trying to make, like, a place to climb. <laughs> Like, you got to keep up that like cardio doing somehow, tumblings. right? <laughs> yeah, like, that's just how I imagine Integrity to be keeping sane in all of this. She's like a shark. She can't stop moving. She can't stop She's swimming. like a shark because she's keep so swimming. smooth. <laughs> she ben, what about half you? her brain off. <laughs> oh, my God. Windsor probably got up to, like, not much. I think I'm at the start yes. after the whole, like, okay, it's we're settling into the fact that we are still in the, some hole in the ground. He probably initially thought like, oh, we were going to go on another adventure. And we're going to explore and stuff. And then the more and more it went on, it was just like, I want out. <laughs> what about Mr. Wiggles? Yeah, that was yeah. my thinking as well. I think I was Winsler like was like this. explaining the situation to Mr. Wiggles at some point. <laughs> but also like keeping keeping them occupied by helping to try and see if they can do tricks. Oh well, nice. Winsler oh, can see you... through Mr. Wiggles' eyes, so do you think they did some, like, <laughs> fucking just playing around with that? Probably. They probably did that. Winsor also probably organized his spell book because that thing was is, like, a complete mess. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. So you've got burned books. You've got ripped pages. It, it looked terrible. How does it look now? Still just terrible, bad. but it's, it's <laughs> you know... More, it's organized chaos. It's tidied up. All the pages are in one book now. Yeah. Uh, maybe I could see Winsler also animating um, the Diane Danger and Illicit Adventure little like minis. Oh my gosh. I think that could Aww. be cute. Yeah, that would be that would be really cute. That's really cute. Conjure, I love that. Conjures like a, a giant like <laughs> smooth boulder to like roll across the board. Aww. That's sick. We see now we're gonna get a Pets and Prophecies arc, but it's just going to be the uh, little Illicit. Adventure and Diane yeah. Danger, like, duo. Yeah. <laughs> um, as for great, on a sour, or uh, a more down note, this man died today. <laughs> went down here. Yeah, like two weeks ago. Um, 
and then descended into the catacombs with Naya Hope and kind of like this thought in the back of his head of like, this girl I'm with is probably an oracle of my god who I don't know a ton about and I should have paid attention more when my parents told me about our god and our religion and hopefully she'll... It's incredibly... <laughs> hopefully she'll get me out of this. It's really funny to think of Mira as like an oracle yeah. like specifically yeah, Mira, over these 14 who fucking days. hates... <laughs> Mira playing with like integrity and their little like moss action figures and like great looking over to the side like this is who my goddess chose. This, this, this is, is this a portent? Is this a portent tent of what is to come? Die in danger. Is this a prophet of some kind? It's like brother. It's like they're doing like a brothers Grimm esque fairy tale and like ah this is the moral of the story that I have to go through to become better and then it just turns out yeah. they were playing a game of like <laughs> yeah Mira and integrity are just like I like it when a tough lady swings on ropes in a dungeon <laughs> <laughs> um, but I imagine him being like incredibly despondent and very much. I mean, we see this a bit at the end where he's just very quiet and kind of like looking to Mira, like, "What the fuck should I do?" Right? Like, I didn't expect to live through this. Right? Like, if I was down here in this labyrinth alone, I probably would have just found some place and died. Right? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I mean, mood. Whenever I think about a zombie apocalypse yeah. situation, I'm like, uh, that's my go-to. Here's a fun fact. Oh, there was a zombie apocalypse. Oh, fuck when? <laughs> On the moon? <laughs> the, it's the, the limb fun plane. Fact is that there was, uh, we didn't run into them, unfortunately, okay. uh, but there was uh, corpses of giants to be found in that lab. Mm. Oh. That would have shown up if they had stayed a bit, like, taken longer. Because to, to fundamentally, it was the same amount of distance they had to cover to get out, but taking longer in the labyrinth would have just meant that they were spreading out more and taking the longest path to get up. And so by that logic, for me at least, I was going to show them a couple of fucking other things mm. under the ground. Uh. Oh, um, like what? Moon mice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Giants. Moon mice. Wait, 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 um, moon mice? Luke was yeah, telling me about this before. Oh, yeah. That, I mean, that's so, odd because the I look went, on his face was, I'm making something up right now. I'm oh, going to have two M no, words no, back no, to no, back. That was very much a thing that he <laughs> talked about. Uh, no. When Winsler failed his perception checks, he walked away to like investigate his portable hole and like threw his, all his textbooks in there and books and spell books. And I was like, make a perception check. That was to see if he saw a couple little moon mice running about, uh, which little were little, stir- little floppy eared little blue mice with long tails. Um, <laughs> and so it's cheese like the mouse for a with head. the big blue house. AKA our food source if we'd been there for five weeks. AK- exactly, <laughs> Sarah. Their food source that I had prepared in case they were there for longer than a person could live without food. Oh, God. They just didn't have food for four. Days. We have moss. They no. ate moss. The implication is that they ate moss. Hard as a rock <laughs> bread. I lit- literally, when you were like, oh yeah, you got like, it's been like 14 days. I was like, I literally like took my phone and I was like, how long can a person live without food but water? <laughs> that and they can live for a pretty why long time. There was, that is why you, a keen eyed observer might mm. note that there, I specified that there was clean drinking mm. water everywhere <laughs> is because I was like, I cannot put them in a labyrinth for three fucking centuries without um, giving them water. That was the maximum time that it would have taken with three centuries. <laughs> but the yes, moon yes, needs you to like, integrity, integrity and Sarenep would have yeah. died, Mira would be dead, and Winsler would be an old man. <laughs> he would be an old but man. But Winsler would finally get to the place and then he'd get to eat some bland food. Yeah. Wow. See, I just assumed that we were being magically kept alive because, Luke, you said uh, something you which was that. like, yeah. you know, I once said you, you were get to... filled up. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so I was like, okay, this... This is, we're being magically sustained in like a horrifying way right now. That's so fucking sick. The, the loop that happened there was I said, you are filled up with magic energy. And Sarah, you said, oh, we've just been eating it. And I didn't <laughs> notice that until I edited it. And so I was just like, oh, that's what Sarah was running off of. Oh, yes. interesting. I just meant you were very magically attuned to the place. I, <laughs> but that's true. That could be true, too. The second that you were like, oh, yeah, like the clean water and blah, blah, blah. And like you guys can drink mm-hmm, from it and mm-hmm. nothing bad happens. I was kind of like, I, I had a moment of thought of like, I mean, we don't really know really know where we are. How long are we going to mm-hmm. be down here? Because mm-hmm. that was the start of my thought that of like, how long, how, how long will we survive down here? Like, what's the rush mm-hmm. time that we have mm-hmm. to get out of here? And then you were like, oh, yeah, by the way, 14 yeah. days. And I'm like. We, we would we would live. We would just be very hungry. Yeah, that's why the disciple gave you a little food to that fucking food. hold you over while they fucking dealt with great. But Mira went. The disciple aggro was so nice to us. That was I'm... so nice of them. What a cool person. <laughs> I'm so thankful for the way Mira reacted oh to the disciple. It made everything 
way less contrived because imagine Mira doesn't attack and then they're just like, oh, by the way, in the Fuck other room, you. there's Go like corruption. Fuck you. Go fix my problem and then I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go fix my house. There's an infestation of cockroaches. It won't yeah, die. Yeah. There's oh, giant rats sure. in the tavern basement. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <Literally, laughs> literally, though. <laughs> Welcome to the moon. Here's your quest. Like, literally sits us down. Here's some, like, drinks and here's some food to fill your bellies. Hey, by the way, there's a rat in my attic. Mm-hmm. Can you go get that for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> I love the gnome, like the the friends made between gnomes and giants. Oh, oh that yeah. little gnome history lesson. Yeah. Yeah. That's so cute. Like it's a little big. Yeah. Like <laughs> little Axel big? being what? so loved by the giant. It's a good trope. <laughs> like, how does that feel, Ben? Like, how does it feel that this entire time the giants were rooting for you? It's really weird. <laughs> <laughs> the giant. I don't know. It's like it's like you have a short little gnome, mm-hmm. and then you have like a super tall giant, and the giant is like, yeah. "Oh my god, you're so cool and stuff." It's just it's just weird because it's like all the other normal but this, like. But tall now you under. I feel like that. now you must understand Mr. Wiggles better than you ever did. Probably. Before. <laughs> this is how. Humans react well, it's to kind cats. kind of like the whole thing oh, with like, true. you know how like, um I forget if it's alligators or crocodiles, but they have like the birds that like help clean out the plaque oh, from yeah. your teeth. It's an unlikely yeah, pairing. Yeah. You know, one yeah. of them could very or clearly destroy the other one, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Gnomes. Have a I don't know if it filled Windsor with a sense of purpose or anything, <laughs> but. But friendship. Yeah. But friendship, right? It's a little, it's a little tidbit. I've had that prepped since you sold your backstory away, friend. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? Ben. The fool uh, was like, Winslow's dropped off at his parents' home as a little baby. Uh, Just him in a little uh, bundle of nothing uh, or a bundle of cloth with this scroll case that can't be opened. And I was like, oh, that's a cool hook, Ben. Wow, that's really neat. That's a good, that's a good thing. I can do a lot with that. And then I prepped stuff and then Ben gave it to Salty. Oh my so god, I forgot that happened. Sold backstory Family ages ago. Is gone. Uh, Lost Christ, to time, though. that is. Listen, it's not about where Winslow came from, exactly. it's about where he is now. And he's on the moon. Like, there might Take be that like, astronaut. Maybe you do enough favors for Salty and she'll be like, you know what, you're my favorite grandson. Here's a, here's a present no, for you. That shit. I mean, <laughs> no, I'm going to bet- tell you. I'll tell you. That scroll case, it's sold to a different person. That person has that. That's an enchanted scroll case Damn. now. They're doing other shit with oh, it. Oh, probably. Oh, oh shit, it. hey, Faramel. It like it like builds it like spews cotton candy. Who the fuck cares? <laughs> you know why don't people enchant more everyday objects with D and D spells? <laughs> no, its original purpose as a scroll case has now been turned into a fucking cotton candy machine. Does that mean yeah. that they actually found a way to Anyways. fucking open it? Do they just uh, break yeah. it the open? world would end? Fucking. It doesn't yeah, matter um, now. It's off screen, I guess. Yep. Yep. It's been off so screen on. since episode We're go to a destroyed. Carnival and get 16. Candy from your family, from your fair family heirloom that you sold to your grandma. It's good stuff. Nope. Never nope. happened. Damn it. Fucking I don't have cotton candy nope. in this world. It's gone. Different like, different universe. Different potential. Damn. You can't have trains. You can't have cotton candy. <laughs> what the fuck is this yeah. game? <laughs> Fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was wiped out along with druid magic when the auxiliary plane was created, <laughs> okay, all right? Fine. Hey, Nathan. Nathan, Nathan. Yeah. You're keen on stuff, eh? I don't know if. I I know Sarah, you observed this at the very least, I think. But Nathan, did you notice the spore thing? Uh, no, but I would like you to explain it to me real quick. Oh, just that the disciple you like sucked in some spores to conjure the food I and conjure a little see. horn. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's very oh, interesting. Like a druid. Yeah. From the because of, of the spore <laughs> druid, the circle of spores <laughs> druid. <laughs> yeah, crazy that. Eh? Hmm, I wonder if be born. I think this. I think this character may have taken the magic initiate and got something <laughs> from the truest fellas. <laughs> just kidding. I see the magic you initiate. are a magic initiate. Just like Winsler. <laughs> the magic initiate feat only allows you to take a spell up to first level, uh, creating food and water. I believe that's a second or third level spell. So that is a third level spell, and only clerics and paladins can learn it <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. One of us got to learn how to do that. Well, some bards can that's learn it too. If we end up in the anything. in the bottom of a labyrinth again, we need to have a better sort. We have to be pre- better prepared for this stuff. I know how we can be better prepared the next time that we're in a labyrinth. Don't how? don't go to a labyrinth. Bring string. Uh, we get we somehow get a minotaur and oh. they'll help us Easy. lead the way out because a minotaur knows a maze by the back of their hand. Speaking of monsters, though, uh, yeah. I do we. 
haven't talked about the ink animals, which uh, oh, no. were a whole thing in this arc. They were like a the big old thing. The dang animals. Talk to me about like which encounter with those ink animals was your favorite and like. Oh, mm. definitely the fight with the fox and the hound. That yep. Was good. Mm. I agree. I, like I liked playing catch with. I I can't. I unintentionally just spent my that entire time pl- trying to play catch with the with my fox tattoo, and it didn't really work until the end. Did it work? I I I thought we were just like I know dying. Ser- Serenup kept it distracted, and then Winslow walked up and fucking thunderclapped it. Or something. Hell yeah, <laughs> thunder waved it. I yeah. yeah, that fight was great because um, he was there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Kind of listen to this situation, actually. (laughs) Because of, like, how close things could get, like, I think we were all very spent at that point because, um, yeah, like, we were all spent. Integrity, by the end of that, had, like, 10 hit points You guys were not great. No, he was dead. And I could have easily gotten swallowed. Um, So that was another, like, almost integrity went bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah, and then there so, was the cat's encounter as well, which was oh uh, my fucking dangerous. And then we had Winsler almost go bye-bye. Yeah. I think everyone <laughs> on our team has now almost died once. Almost gone bye-bye? Yep. Has Mira <laughs> ever made a death saving throw? She, I don't know the if she The only time has. I think she... might have been the pebble fight. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. We you might have done a death. I know Winsler did a death saving throw. Yeah, Winsler had to do a death saving throw. Mira might have, but I don't remember. Anything. Yeah, and and so did Serenup. Serenup got a crit, so. Nice. Yeah, I remember that. I yes, I don't think Mira's ever. Other than that, I don't think he even got Mm. Well, listen, Mira can't die, so. True. <laughs> How many hit points does Mira have? Can we know this? Uh, let's uh, all guess before Sarah says. My bet is 50. Nathan, you need to tell me the answer because Mira's character sheet is on the bedstand. Uh, the uh, let's see if Sarah you. can remember it. I'll, <laughs> I'll be the referee oh. for this. Uh, I give it 58. 54. I was, yeah, I was about to say, like, mm. 57. I'll 52. I get I fifties in the fifties all the So something that deals like a hundred something damage in one turn, you know, that could kill her. I'm so excited to see what the answer is. Something that deal hundred in one turn trivia. would just destroy all, all of us. Right. Has everyone uh put in their guesses? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. All right, yes. I didn't hear what everyone guessed. Oh so I'm gonna be <laughs> fifty seven. Incred- oh, okay. Fifty seven. Uh, I heard Price is right rules. I see how it is. Uh Sarah said fifty four, Luke said fifty eight. I didn't hear the other two. Fifty five. Fifty two. All right. Mm, uh I'm playing it safe. This uh, character sheet that I have here in front of me is current, and the HP total is 58, uh, putting Luke hey! on the scoreboard for the what first time. Oh, shit. Oh, um, congratulations damn. on this impromptu bit. Uh, Luke knows my own character better than me. <laughs> <laughs> what a good DM. Okay, so 116 uh, damage just immediately would kill her. Damn. All right, Luke, you know what damn. you have to do. Okay. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> Okay. Much well, easier. Well, now it would be like 232 now because we're fighting corruption in the next fight. So mm. I'll That's just true. I'll keep that in mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Go ahead, Ben. No, that was I had nothing. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that I just want to add is a note when we're talking Ooh. about these. Oh, sorry. We were talking about the, the fucking fights. Uh, yeah, the ink animals. Delete that. Edit, edit that out. Edit that. Ben, you hear me? Uh, my, fi- my favorite fight for me in terms of things was in fact the moon puzzle Ida fight. Yes. Um, ah. mm. If only That's for the one. single moment where Integrity was like distracting Ida and then immediately became material and got absolutely <laughs> slammed with the fucking <laughs> bone club. It which was so... I could not have asked for better. Her reasoning was so good. too. it can't hurt me. So like, I'll yeah, it's a yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I said it exactly in the episode <laughs> and then I bit my... Frigging tongue immediately after. Yeah, we didn't know what was gonna happen when we finished the puzzle. True. Yeah. But <laughs> honestly, I just Oops. love combats where there is a secondary, um, so secondary goal. Al- like an alternative win condition. Yeah, really? or even just like yeah. something that we need to pay mm-hmm, attention mm-hmm. to, other than just taking the hit points down. So, it's, for example, in the duels, like getting the flag, yeah. I always think that's fun because not only do you have to be strategic about surviving the combat, but you also have to take into account whatever your other aim is, yeah. which I always just think is a very fun from a playing perspective. Absolutely. And narratively, too. That's always the aim, and it doesn't always land, right? I mean, that was the same thing with, like, the Fox and the Hound fight, where it was like, you guys need to reassemble mm-hmm. this totem, and, like, you guys didn't win the fight, you just assembled the totem and blasted everything away, right? These have really been some fucking Legend of Zelda fights. Like, especially the Moon Phase one felt like, all yes. right, what did you steal? Like, what... Like, <laughs> DS Zelda game did you steal this from that no one would recognize? Um, that puzzle, just as in general, and, like, the fight. Well, the fight, I mean, I said this ages ago when we started the arc, but, like, that 
was one of the, I, I imagined Ida first and the vision of a tattooy Ida being a massive inky form and blasting people was just like what inspired um, a lot of my like visual thought going into this arc and the reason I wanted to explore the tattoo stuff and I thought they would just be compelling uh, fights and it would be fun to do and then everything else formed around that uh, and then putting her in that catacombs and getting her to just crunch on bones and live in like the moon moon rooms <laughs> and just grow massive was so fun i also enjoy we went from like the smallest enemy to immediate and then like progressively increased in size that was quite fun for me because they could have done it out of order or they could have just skipped things like they did with the cat because we probably won't deal with the cat or ida you've just left those like, fuck that cat secondary objectives yeah <laughs> like so i have to ask luke yeah. I don't know if we're ever going to get an explanation within. I'm, I'm sure we will at some point, but it might be further down the line where I just completely forget about it. Uh -huh. Like, what exactly is supposed to happen if we don't defeat them, but then the full moon finally kind of passes and, and they just sort of turn into messes on the floor? Or is it like they somehow just get warped back? Yeah. The specific wording, I think the... Tattoo merchant, tattoo merchant, the tattoo artist used um, was that it was magic ink and they will come alive in the light of a full moon. I don't think he ever or like and then they would chill out after like a week or something like that. Um, that's what he said. And I'm going to just play it fast and loose and say that he doesn't know what he's fucking talking about. Deal. Uh, <laughs> because my more fun belief and just by the sheer fact of like if you Winsler and Integrity were to check your own tattoos right now or have someone else check them the tattoos would not be back to their regular state and because I believe that it's more fun that those stay as a lasting artifact of your failure than uh, just fixing everything hunky dory Even like I like them being something that Crow Mercantile now has to deal with <laughs> or on in the case of Ida I think that you can almost take a more uh, mythological bend of it where there is now oh this God. massive moon squirrel in the catacombs and that just loiters or like sneaks about. Like that's fucking scary. Troyal falls and the civilization of the ink cats rises up in its place. <laughs> oh my gosh. If I may put this idea yeah, forward. Absolutely. Um, someone in the vicinity wakes up with a new tattoo. Uh, and mm, you know, God. then the next full moon comes around, and they have to deal. That's with That's what Osgul Parm fucking deserves. It's true. <laughs> it's like chicken pox. You guys really fucking saw through my observer who wants to watch over all of your actions the moment you come into town and escort you to the interesting places. You really saw through that, that one for the ninth time. <laughs> that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I just realized that now. No wonder he was just trying because to keep you Oscar... away from sensitive shit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's some sensitive shit that they could have found, uh, but did not? Well, there was the there was the whole notebook about it, right? Like the golem dissection oh, and stuff. Golem dissection. I didn't know if there was more uh, than that. Paying people off. Yeah. Font of shadow and the people who moved the font of shadow no longer being in Troyal mm -hmm. and then getting uh, hush money and then a visit from someone else. Uh, the amazing fish with uh, fucking healing potion lore that there are these fish from far out west that you just kind of put them in water and they will make health potions for you as they dilute and stuff like that and they look like love discs no. and they're called they melt they're nice. called cray cray c-r-e-i c-r-e-i and I, I that's really stupid but I really like it <laughs> because the entire this is such a fucking aside but the entire podcast I've always described a health potion as being a little raspberry flavored drink. And to further that and say it comes from a fish is just very stupid. <laughs> and fish. I like it. Um, other shit they could have found. There was the magic bricks that Winsler yeah, the magnet bricks. investigated. It wasn't magnet bricks, but we What? Were, uh... You said it was. <laughs> That's because you rolled like <laughs> shit. <laughs> They're clearly like... magnetic bricks. <laughs> Um, Naturally. There was something magnetic in the room inside that uh, workshop that could have been investigated. There was actually, uh, they were there, but they will no longer be there. I'll have to move them. There was a Patreon NPC in that room with the magnet. Oh, um, shit. That I was very excited because there was a possibility that you would just encounter it and kill them. 
um, without any other knowledge, and I was so excited for that. What? Um, I was just generally prepped for you guys to go to the workshop that I kept talking about, Workshop E, where I was like, that's where all like the secret shit goes. And then Winsler, they were like, Winsler, you got to go there because that's there's a stuff going there, right? And I was like, I would be so enthused if you went to this place. And we never did. The closest we got was the cats, and I can live with that, sadly. Damn, I wonder who we could have had the opportunity to murder in cold blood. Yes. I wonder which patron would be severely disappointed. Oh, God. Mm. <laughs> I wonder. Oh, excellent stuff. Let's see. Is there anything else? Let me think about the events of mm-hmm. this arc. Uh, there's Kurt stuff, but I feel like we've already talked yeah. about that some. Um, yeah. Kurt Schmert. I, f- I feel bad for him, though. Like, he's just all of his friends classmates just vanish i think he are they his kind friends? of thrilled though because now he can run around <laughs> free reign and give everybody his great ideas without winsler nagging yeah him. pretty much yeah like no <laughs> joke i'm this is kurt's blossoming era like <laughs> yep 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 just, I, I don't need winsler i want to know what has happened to angelica oh, during the time question. that we yep. have been in the labyrinth because i mean I, they, you know, we were very clear, mm-hmm. keep the blanket on her, etc. But provided, you know, our internship has either just ended or is about to end, have they just, like, left her in there? Has, has anything been happening to her? Because Mira can now no longer do her psychically damaging morning checkups. It's possible that there may not even be an Angelica anymore. Or maybe she's fine. Her soul is no longer yeah. there. Just- or she may be up walking around and not remember being asleep at all. Yeah. That's also very Uh-oh. much a possibility, in which case that's worrying too. And then when you, then when you turn away from her, there's going to be like a camera pan and you just see an evil smile appear on her face and then she fucking stabs you with a <laughs> serpent fang. <laughs> I've been taught, or Sarah. Ah, you've been, you read my fic, this. I see, Sam. <laughs> I did. I, I, I very much enjoyed yes, that. It's honestly. so I, funny. I tried to capture your voice uh, as Serenep. <laughs> I hope I did an okay job. Of like oh, the, the extremely, w- yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, redemption. redemption. Go to ao3.com <laughs> slash trials. I don't think the, li- the links work that way, but it's on AO3 on Trials and Trebuchets. It's a little one shot. It's mm-hmm. called Redemption. It's about Angelica uh, waking up with uh, a goal yeah. in mind. A goal oh, yeah. in mind. It's also written in I... second person, which fucked oh, me shit. up when I read the first bit. Very scary to be spoken at <laughs> by Nesca. Um, <laughs> <quite frankly. laughs> now, you know feel... now you know how the rest of us feel, Luke. <laughs> <laughs> I I have every time Sarah has mm-hmm. created something for us to enjoy, whether mm-hmm. it's fan fiction or the meme mm-hmm. compilations mm-hmm. on YouTube, which I enjoy every once in a while going back to to see how mm-hmm. fucking chaotic we are. I it's very it's very like it's very spot on. <laughs> Thank you. Of like cuz like it's hard to kind of see how you are portraying a character mm-hmm. like when you yourself mm-hmm. are doing it. Because you have your thoughts and hidden things or whatever. And then someone else brings it up to you. It's like, hey, you're like a really exhausted mom <laughs> who is also the wine aunt. And I'm like, fuck yeah, let's go. God, why not? Sarah enough is accurate, actually, considering the fucking shake and break era. Yeah, you guys got fucking boozy. Oh, that never got paid off. And I'm kind of mm-hmm. still butthurt about that. But, eh. I think I still have alcohol at my place. But, like, it's, it's yeah. I haven't yeah. drank it. So it Sometimes you just drink. gotta go to a party palace. It's true. And meet a street rat who wants to commit crimes at you. You know. <laughs> oh, go ahead, Carla. Oh, never mind. This one is like completely different. I'm. J- I guess oh. I'm just like wondering what the heck happened to like the projects that we initially helped yeah. with, and then did not do anything. Like, or... like she went around. I don't think we did anything with our projects, honestly. Like, I wanted to work with the with the grays and kind of got held up once. by some inky creatures well what i'm curious about is like then because we did not do that how we will be received when we get back because i can imagine crow is going to have some questions for us like of course one are we gonna get paid two like what are we going to be asked about like you know what has happened in our absence i'm very intrigued about all of it I really loved, speaking of you all having to answer to Crow, one scene (laughs) that I did really love was you all talking about getting your story straight because I think it has Mm -hmm. been a uh, great, like, scene showing how you all have grown from the very beginning in terms of, like, yeah, we know Mm -hmm. how authority figures are and we specifically kind of know how Crow is. Yeah, Um, we know how to tailor this to hit all the boxes that we need to. Mm -hmm. It's true. And once again, Crow, like, reveals himself to be an incredible mastermind of like, oh, I'm now going to get uh, 
you know, whatever information these teens dig up. And he absolutely did. Um, mm-hmm. They uncovered some big secrets. And now he's going to find out about all of them because I'm sure you all will tell the truth and the whole truth. Definitely. The whole the truth. <laughs> yes. 100%. You will. <sighs> yep. Can't wait for second year. I'm excited for second year too. What do you all, uh, let's, let's look down the path just a bit. So we have the six corrupt things. Now tell me, Luke, are these like going to be back to back to back or is we going to be facing like quests to get to these uh, corruptions? Or is it a swarm? Whatchamacallit's. That can be synaptic like static. Corrupt thing? I thought what is this a... deal with the six corruptions? What do you speak of? Wait, I'm sorry. I thought they were... I may have misremembered or misunderstood mm. something. Mm-hmm. I thought that the um, like little remnants left behind or corruption shit. There was... I think there's two. In the room, in this shrine yeah. on the moon, there's two... There's a lot of stuff, okay, but it gotcha. formed into two beings. I see. I misunderstood. Yes. I don't know where I got six I think from. You, I think you. I think you were misconstruing like the planes or something. I probably was. There's like six. I, uh, yeah. There, uh, listen, happen. I got a lot of a lot things of shit. Yeah, popping you know around in this brain of mine. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that I missed something, and I was like, Wait, Nathan knows six? the secrets. Nathan knows what's coming next. <laughs> it's true. The, <laughs> the six corruptions. I've seen the DM notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's corrupted um, aspects very, of all the gods. Obviously. Obviously. No. I'm excited for the fight next episode um i don't know there's something exciting i don't know i can only speak for me uh there's something exciting about the a piece of uh, essentially uh, as intuited or just said a piece left behind by the progenitor or something Mm -hmm. or like a disconnected bit of him uh fighting that so fighting some uh small percentage of his uh strength uh, well, that really, because sh- very... that's going to show us how powerful the progenitor mm-hmm. at full might is, right? I'm terrified. Um, yeah, 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 I don't yeah. know. It's like, um, I don't know. It's like in movies when they send like a mini swarm or like a small version of themselves or then you mm-hmm. see them transform to full power and you get an extent yeah. of like how mm-hmm. unwinnable a fight against something like that could be, mm-hmm. which I always just think is a very fun trope. Yes, indeed. That is the case here. That was my intent at the very Hell least. Yeah. Yeah. I hope one of you all die. <laughs> Um, no offense, I just think it would oh, be Oh, which fun. one do you think yeah. should die, Nathan? Who, who, yeah, Nathan, who do you want to kill? Who Carla. would you kill? Oh, ex- ah. integrity, integrity. Oh my god! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> okay, Holy now shit. which character, Nathan? Nathan! Excuse me, excuse what me. What did I do to I've you? I've integrity. This is the very time You're that I so call... You're so entangled. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you're interchangeable to me. I, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Oh. No, Carla yeah. suffers ego Honestly, death, and now we have to talk to Integrity the whole time. It's I like Integrity is the one that makes the most sense. I like the I? idea of mm-hmm. Integrity like going last in initiative, and then all of her friends like step forward to do something cool, and then Integrity just like fucking stabs someone in the back, cuts their heart out, and is like, "All right, corruption, hit a ride, let's fucking go." Hell yeah! Uh, that would, and then and then <laughs> they all fly to the moon, just sit there oh, as Integrity the uh, ends the world. I just want to know what happens when Selty collects. That's oh, my. Did you read that? Uh, uh, you censored what happens next, but I, I did. did. Yes, I did see like, ooh, here's a little bit of you know what's gonna happen when everybody dies, which has me very mm-hmm. excited for the. And one if of you want to see those CM notes, <laughs> pledge twenty five dollars to patreoncom slash and trips. I think they're decent notes. They're fun. There's a they're lot of very stuff fun. In them. There's some fun little uncensored insights about various things that I think are super yeah. interesting. But a lot of important stuff still is censored because mm-hmm. it still has implications in the long run Mm -hmm. and the point of doing something like this where i give you guys a chance to learn and ask questions from like a a being like the disciple who is cool um and maybe we should talk about for a second yeah Um, i would like to get around to them getting the absolute getting the chance to ask a a character like that questions who just does have fun should have answers uh for you is like exciting but you must complete this task to earn trust uh and i i like that little yeah that's fair but I'm excited to fill in some blanks, and that would lead to like some of the things that are censored in those notes being like discussed. I should say. Can inte- can salty collect a soul if the person dies on the moon? You know, like yes. Damn. Because that contract is very. Binding. I heard her show up in a little astronaut <laughs> outfit. <laughs> Anywhere in the multiverse. Jesus Christ! Damn. Look at the fine print before you sign away a seventeenth of your soul. No. <laughs> Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> um, um, let's. Oh, go ahead, Luke. No, I wanted to talk quickly uh, about the disciple because I was also going not, to segue into the disciple. Oh, well, in that case, bring us in, Nathan. Bring us into Harbor. Let's talk the about disciple. the disciple. What do you all think of the disciple? Oh, <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I will say, um, I had a lot of fun playing the disciple. Um, just in terms of vibes, I guess they weren't. What like, an unhelpful person, though. Yeah, they were great. Um, <laughs> I hate when people there to empower have unhelpful. giants. They are there to help the giants continue on the cycle, and that is it. And no non-giants other than one angry fucking impatient lady has been here, right? <laughs> um, but to step back, I had a lot of fun playing them, and I was very careful with the way I was wording things, and people with keen ears can go back and listen, because I, at least from my perspective... Feel like I the way I phrase things is particularly telling in some cases, mm. um, and there's some stuff that can be intuitive that is a little bit fun. Um, Let me yeah. just cue up that episode again for me to listen to <laughs> as soon as we finish. Mm. Um, I mean, they like stuff like them being like, "Oh, if you ever fucking see your arm, hell, tell them what's up, right?" From me because we are kin. Yeah, We're kin. Like, that's, yeah, that yeah. was interesting. What? What yeah. do you? Th- what do you all Good think stuff. about that? Well, like, what... Mira's arm's a stone giant, so... <laughs> naturally, naturally. <laughs> well, I mean, like, the arm is tied to Seishul slash, like, Meafide, and presumably so is the disciple. So I was assuming that that was the through line there of, like, we are both some kind of divinely... Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I wow. have a theory. What's your theory? Not particularly tied to any divinity related or anything, but if... Um, if they say that, like, Mira's snake arm, Nesca essentially, is their kin, <laughs> and there's just horns all, all mm-hmm. along the walls and stuff, makes me wonder if the original inhabitants of the true Ib mm-hmm. were giants, mm-hmm. only, only giants, mm-hmm. and that they're a remnant of that unbroken world, and that the giants of, you know... Uh, the uh, fake ib or whatever are basically just like leftovers almost. I love that representation. What it would mean is that everyone who's been like Taras is appearing to Mira has been appearing as a tiny version of herself. Well, here's uh, the and, thing. And, and I mean, Nesca in that case would just be a regular sized snake <laughs> if she ascended. <laughs> well, the thing is that like the, the world like of Shior, they are all giants, but Tarasis and Nesca are just short. <laughs> <laughs> They're just really short for giants. Well, you have you have to understand that when the like when the world uh-huh. broke or whatever, like <laughs> dimensions, yeah, you know, get a little giants bit. reached about six foot six at well, highest. Yeah, the, 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 the giants have better nutrition in their diets now. Yep, you know, yep. uh, on on new Ib, oh the gravity is smaller, mm, <laughs> so they can be too. bigger. Oh my! <laughs> I it's also, smaller. I just really like having a name for the planet now. I didn't have one for a really long time. I had a placeholder name. So originally, uh, Agio was a placeholder for the continent, but then we started the show before Mm -hmm. I came up with a better name. And so I was just like, this is the fucking name of the continent, I guess. And then I just tried not to say the name of the planet or world ever because I didn't have a good name. And then I was like, Ah. I just am going to draw a line in the sand and call it Ib. And it's very funny to listen to in terms of like, theorizing to just hear people being like new ib old ib is just funny for me yeah what is the name for people who live on ib like in the same way that we are all earthlings are they like ibians <laughs> ibians <laughs> oh my yeah. god yes iblings okay Amphibians. i love it every time i hear the word ib i think of the friggin video game wait um, no can we <laughs> can we be actually um Ibiots. 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 I like it. Ibiots. Yeah, you're a bunch I of like Ibiots. I feel that. <laughs> What's up, Ibiots? <laughs> very good. <laughs> okay, I like that one better. Good good oh argument, God. Carla. And for those curious, it is ISB. Obviously. Yeah, because it was named by giants. And the so giant if you think that's a dumb exactly. name, take it up with the giants, which you can't. Take it up with the giants. Because they're not real. Further cementing the theory that giants were the first mm-hmm. to, you the, know, The first people to name it world. are usually the first inhabitants. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Yeah. I called dibs on naming this floating rock. But dibs is spelled D Y S B. Yeah, but those are my th- those are my thoughts on it. Go back and listen to that episode. Use your big ears. Uh, I'm gonna use lessons. my big ears. Don't All right, worry. I'm gonna yeah. be transcribing that scene then. Oh, uh, fascinating. Make sure anyone who wants to have it Ooh. can go over to the Discord <laughs> server. <laughs> gonna analyze that Ooh. shit until my eyes are sore. Why does this like entire episode sound just like um like an ad for multiple things? 
I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to, to weave it all in there. That um, way we don't okay, have to. Okay, so yeah. once again, if you would like to read Event Horizon. <laughs> I haven't brought it up yet uh, in the, in this episode of CNC, which means I should bring up that I've written a fan fantasy. Oh <laughs> <laughs> Go read a oh Horizon. God. Apparently, oh God, it has yes. tie-ins to the little planar uh, slideshow we saw, which it does. is shocking to my very core. Um, so you've got to you've got to get to the point where she she meets the planar I wizard. Do. I I guess I do. <laughs> Luke, you do. <laughs> Before we go, Nathan. Yeah. What are your thoughts on seeing the different plans? Do you remember them? Oh, I. It is very easy to remember them okay. because you did a very good job of giving like little short vignettes for each one. So props to you on that. That is like my Thank first you. thought, which is, oh, these are all very distinct. I like this. I like having distinct worlds um, mm. or planes. Uh, yeah. Second of all, it almost makes me feel um, it. I have like two feelings that are conflicting, uh -huh. which is one is, yes. God, I want to see like a little mini adventure in each one of these um, because mm -hmm. they are all distinct and they're all filled with dead people, which is fun. Um <laughs> Uh, but um, you know. <laughs> also, however, on the other hand, that's a lot of time to dedicate yes. to just like, hey, where are you going on the whistle stop tour of the planes? And so yep. it felt like this was a way of us being like, here, we get to look at all the planes and you can fill in the blanks yourself mm -hmm. without mm -hmm. us having, having to go to them in the same way that we have with uh, 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 Is it though? Yeah. Is it though? I don't know what you're going to say. Yeah, no, yeah. it was. I yeah. just decided to pause longer <laughs> for uh, comedic okay. effect. <laughs> um, I will say, I made those vignettes to show very specific things about those planes. Um, like what? The Redstone Temple in Isithil. There was a book on a lectern in Siltrin. Uh, a ship stuck in a rock in uh, Stivus. The top of a mountain in Rel. Uh, the specifically stairways going up into the perfect little cottonball clouds with presumably a giant clock up there. Um, and then, of course, the chalice in tar pits in hell, a.k.a. Lem. Um, those are just to name a few. They really got to visit Lem. So what you're trying to say yeah. is this, like, all of these are the most important things to these gods and, like, to these gods, and you want us to steal them. <laughs> yes. Is that correct? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Time to go relic diving. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps, like, restore Final them. Yeah, Wait. it is time for a plane heist. Um, <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh Eat your heart God. out of Avengers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all my thoughts. Well, fascinating. I'm excited to see where we go next. Uh, mm -hmm. Everyone, be thinking about your roses and thorns because I'll be diving into those Ooh. with you uh, next time on CNC. Um, <laughs> that, that's right you should Don't be all ghost. very afraid of what's coming next in cnc <laughs> the show with consequences <laughs> next yeah, time we'll all be dead <laughs> this is where we start telling you about our planned backup characters oh. that's going to be the whole next episode yeah oh god yeah. hell yeah next? i mean you all oh, are shit. going to face a you tpk got... you guys Honestly? are just going to be first years again <laughs> oh no it's like we're just we gonna heard wake the up. The legend of like the group that just <laughs> went crazy that one year. Like, there's like crazy rumors about like what act would happen to us. Like, no one really knows. It's like, yeah, like one person's there for one yeah. person left for treason. The other one ran away to be with their girlfriend, mm -hmm, but she turned mm -hmm. into a lich. This, like, the orientation it, it's just a list is, of hey, last year just four like... students came by and they fucked the whole thing up for everybody. <laughs> this is where you get to meet my new yeah. NPC, Mia. Oh my Don't god, me. Mia. <laughs> Well, it is actually not a joke that Carla is writing a new character. So, every, so everyone, I want to thank you all for joining me. Uh, and to our listeners, I would also like to extend a very heartfelt thank you. Yeah. Uh, I would also like to apologize for the wait. We have had a ton of big life stuff going on, such as mm -hmm. moves, illness, etc. Like, tons of stuff has been going on. We appreciate your patience. No yeah. kidding. Uh, I We greatly appreciate it, and uh, there shouldn't be another hiatus like that in the foreseeable future, but if there is, bear with us. Mm -hmm. um, You're only human. This show is a, a, a fun time, yeah. Uh, and it, we're only going to have a fun time recording it for having a fun time out of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, exactly. Thank you. Now, give us money for... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> give us yeah, money yeah. so that Yay. we're not sad. Pay us. <laughs> Uh, and if you want to give us the uh, biggest, mm -hmm. like, concrete impact on our mental health, give us money over at <laughs> patreon.com slash trials and trebs. Uh, or even better, go visit mm -hmm. trebmerch.com. Trebmerch.com? Trebmerch.com. That's right. We got a shirt. 
featuring <laughs> a snake that we mentioned in this episode I named know. Nesca. It says Love a you, Nesca. on the back. Nesca, get fucked. <laughs> and, <laughs> anywho, trevmerch.com. Visit it. Get a get a sticker. Get yeah. a shirt. And also, let's say you can't afford a sticker or a shirt or a shirt or a monthly donation on patreon.com slash Charles and Trevs. Mm-hmm. So instead, tell a friend about our show. Um, yeah. Word of mouth is the only advertising that we do. And it's also most effective when yes. you implement it. That helps us incredibly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and a, a part of that word of mouth is going and reviewing us on your podcatcher of choice, giving us five stars. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. really mm-hmm. helps the uh, visibility of the podcast. And um, what else am I missing? Oh, Instagram.com slash Charles and Trips. Yeah. Twitter.com slash Charles and Trips. Get no, never mind. Don't go to Twitter. Don't go to Twitter. <laughs> not, not the Twitter. Not the media. Twitter. Not the Twitter. Not the Twitter. Cut that. <laughs> Cut that. Uh, but Instagram to see teasers, artwork, and even sometimes delightful little maps. Uh, oh, it's a map. It's a map. It's uh, a map. It's. And then map. there's Discord. Yeah, which is in the dot bottom. Oh, no. Yeah, <laughs> which is in the bottom. bottom there's a description. Of what, below. Luke? <laughs> you mean the description I was going below? To say it's a, anywho. Click on the things. Go visit us. Yeah. Say hello. Yes. We do read every review. We do see every message True. you send. And we greatly appreciate every single word. We are all knowing. We see you when you, you're sleeping. We no. know when you're awake. We know if you've been very good. <laughs> hey, Nathan. Thank yeah. you for hosting. Thank you, Nathan. Thank you, Thank you for so hosting. Much, Nathan. No problem. I would like Woo! to remind you again that whatever information was told to you earlier today, <laughs> none of them were true. Um, <laughs> Cut that. Bye. What? What Sarah was what? telling you when you were setting what up that we all hated you and it? wanted you to die? I, I, they did say that. They oh. did say that, that was that was a lie. Everything. No. I I forget everything that happens before recording. As soon as we begin recording, I, so much. Stress. My past was a void. Yeah.